Welcome inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, where Ohio State just wrapped up its third spring practice of the year. And we had the opportunity to talk to Ryan Day today as he held his second press conference of the spring. And of course, the big topic of the day was who's going to be Ohio State's new running back coach? Because between the last time Ohio State had a practice here, uh, Tony Alford left Ohio State to go be the running backs coach at Michigan. And so Ohio State is now. Uh, in the midst of a search for a new running backs coach. And uh, Ryan Day said that they have uh, some very impressive candidates that they have been talking to. They are talking to candidates this week. Uh, I thought it was interesting that Ryan Day mentioned that the running backs themselves have actually been involved in that process. Uh, Ryan Day's been getting feedback from them on, you know, who they'd want to be a running backs coach and, you know, surely trying to make sure, you know, those guys are happy. When you have two running backs like Travion Henderson and Quinchon Judkins, you certainly want to make sure uh, that they're going to be happy with who the new running backs coach is going to be. But you got the sense from Ryan Day that they, they feel like they're in a good spot there. They, they, they're comfortable, but they're going to be able to bring in a top-notch candidate to replace Tony Alford. And I think the fact that they have two veteran running backs leading that room who probably don't need a ton of coaching this spring uh, eases the timeline a little bit. Yeah, I he called it the best running back room in the country, and I, I don't think there's... Um, you know, I think it's I fair to call him. A, you're right. That's exact, exactly it. I agree. Um, when you have Travion Henderson and Quinchon Judkins, I mean, it's it's hard. It's like being handed the keys to a Ferrari and told not to wreck it, right? I mean, whoever comes in is walking into a fantastic situation, which is why I thought it was surprising to hear Day talk about player development as the main factor in this search. Uh, now, behind the scenes, who, who's to say how much that weighs into everything? But, you know, it, recruiting seemed like the next thing after uh, the ability to develop and coach running backs uh, when Ohio State is looking for a replacement for Tony Alford. Also give credit to Day, too, because, you know, when, when someone flips to your rival, goes to your rival school like that, could be easy to have uh, to express some bitter emotions. Maybe Day is feeling that behind the scenes, but stayed pretty mum about it today, said, you know, we're, that Ohio State's keeping the focus on itself and, you know, everyone's got to do what's best for their family, and, and that was kind of all he said about, like, his, his personal feelings feelings about Alford leaving. Um, it would have been pretty surprising, honestly, if, if he had gotten into that. It, Ryan Day's never been the type to want to distract focus from what the team is doing in practice right now. And, you know, now that they're back from spring break, you know, they got uh, 13 practices here in a span of four weeks. And so they've got uh, a lot that they want to get accomplished here over the next four weeks. And Ryan Day's actually coaching those running backs himself right now. Yeah. So he's getting back to his roots a little bit uh, in, in terms of position coaching uh, for a temporary basis. He said, you know, because they're down assistant coach, they've also been able to bring up some of their support staff to help out. Uh, Rob Keyes, who's a special teams quality controls coach, has been doing that some. Also, uh, Tony Johnson, uh, son of Larry Johnson, who was hired as a senior analyst this offseason. He's been getting in there and coaching a little bit too. Uh, the other interesting thing we learned about the coaching staff today is how the special teams coaching is going to be constructed because Ohio State did not hire a new special teams coordinator to replace Parker Fleming. And Ryan Day revealed that that actually came about in part because of a conversation he had with Jim Tressel, where Jim Tressel told him that, you know, when he was the coach, when you'd have uh, the head coach or a position coach leading those special teams meetings, guys would take a bit more accountability because, you know, it was, you know, not somebody who was maybe a little lower on the totem pole. It was, you know, their position coach. It was somebody that they always wanted to be impressing. And so uh, Matt Guerreri and James Laurinaitis are going to be leading the kickoff and punt teams. And Keenan Bailey and Brian Hartline are going to be leading the kickoff return and punt return teams. And Day is also going to be very involved in all those meetings. Now that at least once they get a running backs coach back, he's not going to be that position coach slash offensive play caller anymore. Yeah, it's the CEO role of having your hand in a lot of different pots that we've kind of discussed all offseason with Day, uh, him being involved in special teams is another result of that. And I really like this approach to it, you know? I think we both talked about in the offseason how hiring a special teams coordinator we didn't think was the best use of that last assistant coaching spot for Ohio State, especially given how things worked out with Parker Fleming. And so if you're not going to hire that special teams coordinator, you either have it be the second duty entirely of a guy on staff, or you split it up. And I think 
giving it to multiple different coaches. Guys, you know, when you're a younger player on a team like Ohio State, special teams are your chance to get on the field, make an impact. And I think there, as you pointed out, there's going to be a little more accountability, a little more drive from those younger players who are on special teams to impress their position coaches and maybe have that build into bigger roles on offense or defense in the future. Still very early in the spring, so a lot of uh, you know position battles still have a long way to go to play out. But you know, Ryan Day was asked about a lot of different positions on Tuesday. I think you know one comment that stood out to me was when he was asked about the offensive line, and he mentioned that Josh Fryer has had one of the best off seasons of any player. We already knew that because he was named one of the Iron Buckeyes for the winter. But it, it seems right now like Ohio State has a lot of optimism in Josh Fryer that he can take that next step and he can lock down that right tackle job. And if that turns out to be the case, then the real competition on the offensive line is at that right guard spot between Luke Montgomery and Tegra Shabola. Yeah, you, we know how much I love discussing the offensive line. Uh, they said that, you know, Tegra's, they're viewing him more as a tackle right now. So if he's going to get involved in that competition, it might be the result of Fryer sliding into guard. But as you said, I don't think... I'd lean toward that being the case thus far. We talked about with Josh this offseason, you know, I think he had some clear deficiencies at tackle, but overall did play well enough to be an All-Big Ten player, had some good PFF grades, depending on how much, you know, you buy into those. Uh, I think Josh has... He, ha he is very strong as a run blocker. There's some things he does well as a pass blocker against pure speed off the edge. Maybe had some issues. But if he's going to take those kinds of steps, and maybe he's taken another step physically to be able to handle that sort of speed off the edge and, and not have those sort of big lapses we saw from him. Because he didn't get beat that often, but when he got beat, he got beat bad. And that was kind of the problem with Josh last year, right? So I, I, I'm really interested to see, you know, against the true speed guys off the edge that they have in practice how Josh is handling those situations. We saw Luke Montgomery working at guard. They said that both those guys um, pretty much gave equal credence to both of them at guard or tackles as, in terms of them being capable of playing either. I think the other interesting position uh, update that we got today, for at least most interesting to me, uh, was the tight ends. And, and Day was had very lofty praise for G. Scott Jr. Said he expects a big season from him this year. Um, and it seems like he's trending toward really securing that starting tight end role in place of, of Cade Stover. Uh, and Day wants to see more from the rest of the guys in that room, whether that's Will Kasmerick, who, who you just brought in from the transfer portal, Jelani Thurman up and coming as a, as a highly touted recruit, or even through he threw even through Bennett Christian into the mix as a guy who was suspended last year. Um, but, you know, still in the fold for Ohio State. So I think, you know, tight ends don't always get a lot of uh, praise from the, don't get a lot of eyes from the public, but an important position. And uh, that's another battle that I'm curious to see how it evolves and I guess exactly how big of a step G. Scott is taking. Yeah, still a long way to go. 12 more practices left this spring. The next practice will be on Thursday here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Uh, we will be back here as well. Brian Hartline, Tim Walton, several players to be named later are expected to uh, meet with the media on Thursday. So uh, we'll actually be back here Wednesday, too, for Pro Day, but uh, we'll be back with another episode of press coverage on Thursday.